Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining. My name is Gloria and I am a software engineer at Microsoft. Today, I will be walking you through how to set up Azure communication services with WhatsApp messaging. We will cover everything from resource creation to receiving and sending your first message and understanding pricing. So here's our agenda for today. We will start by creating an Azure communication services or we like to call it an ACS resource through the Azure portal and get a taste of the features it offers by exploring the built-in sandbox experience. Next, we will walk through how to connect a WhatsApp business account to your ACS resource. Then I will demonstrate how to set up EventGrade to receive inbound messages. Finally, we will wrap up by showing how to send outbound WhatsApp messages using the ACS SDK. The first thing we want to do is to create an ACS resource. It allows you to build communication features like voice, messaging, email, and more into your own application, all backed by the same global infrastructure as Microsoft Teams. To create such a resource, we will go through a few straightforward steps on Azure portal. I will guide you through the process step by step. Let's jump right into it. So, how do we create an Azure Communication Services resource? First, sign in to the Azure portal. In the search bar at the top, you want to type in Communication Services. And once you find it, click into it, and we want to click on Create. You will need to select your subscription and a resource group. Either choose an existing one or create a new one. I'm going to create a new one called Gloria Resource Group. Next, you want to give your resource a unique name. Here, I'm calling it Gloria ACS. And you want to select data location that best suits your customers. This determines where your data will reside. Once you're done with the configuration, click Review and Create. Double check everything looks good, and then you can hit Create. It will take a couple minutes to get your resource deployed, but once that's done, your ACS resource will be ready to use. Let's click into the resource. From there, you will be able to access information like your connection string, manage your keys, and you can also configure identity or manage different communication service modalities. This is where we will be doing, this is the foundation for everything else we'll be doing today. Before we proceed to setting up a full WhatsApp business account and integrating with Azure Communication Services, which could be a lengthy process, which involves meta account setup, number registration, and channel configuration, to help developers quickly test advanced messaging features, we have a WhatsApp sandbox directly sitting in your Azure portal. With the sandbox, you can test sending template and text messages over WhatsApp without going through the full business account setup. This significantly lowers the barrier for early experimentation and development. So here is how to get started with Sandbox. In your ACS resource, you want to navigate to Advanced Messaging Group, click on Try Advanced Messaging tab. There, you will find a Connect to WhatsApp section with a QR code. Now, pull out your phone, open your WhatsApp application, and simply scan this QR code. It will directly take you to a business account named Advanced Messaging Sandbox by Microsoft. Open a chat with the, this account like this. Next, you go back to the Azure portal, look for a unique connection message like this one, and send that in the chat. Once we receive it, you will get a confirmation on the page, and two new tabs will pop up. After you're connected, you can try two types of messages. Template message using predefined message formats with placeholders and simple freeform text messages. One thing to note is that WhatsApp has something called a 24-hour session window. That means if a user interacts with your business, you can respond with any non-template messages, including freeform text or media messages for 24 hours. If you want to send messages outside that window, though, you must use a predefined pre-approved template that you need to create on your Meta portal. There are three different templates our sandbox has pre-configured that you can try out. 
Um, let's just try out the appointment reminder for now. I can change up the template parameters to my own name, Gloria Lee, and try sending it. I will receive this message on my connected phone number. Let's also try a free form text message. I'll just type, hi, Gloria, click send. Similarly, I am able to receive it on my personal WhatsApp application. So this sandbox is a great way to understand how WhatsApp messaging works, what's possible, what's restricted, and how your application logic needs to adapt. No setup hassle, no cost, just instant experimentation. Once you're comfortable with the sandbox, the next step is to connect a real WhatsApp business account. This allows you to send messages in a production environment to real users. This time, we will click on Channels tab. At this moment, we don't have any channels configured yet, so let's try clicking Create a new channel. And we want to select WhatsApp as the channel. You'll be guided through a setup process that requires a few prerequisites. For example, you will need A, a Facebook account, B, a phone number that can receive SMS, and C, a Meta business account. If you don't already have a Meta business account, no worries. You will be prompted to create one during this flow. Once you are um, comfortable with what you need to provide, you want to scroll to the bottom and accept the terms and conditions. You'll be able to use either an ACS phone number you own under this resource or bring your own number. Either way, it will require verification, which you will complete via an SMS code sent during WhatsApp embedded signup. For me, I'm going to bring my own phone number and click Next. This page, we will put down the phone number I plan to use for registration, and then I will log in to my Facebook account. I'll continue as myself, click Get Started. First thing to do is selecting or creating your Meta Business Portfolio. For me, I'm going to choose an existing business portfolio I already own. But if you don't already have one, you can create one simply by filling out these fields, specifically a name to your business, a website of your business, and the country. A small tip for company website, if you don't already have an official company website yet, you can use any of your social media URL, such as Facebook page or Instagram profile for this one. All right, now click next. Under this business portfolio umbrella, you want to create or select a WhatsApp business account. I'm going to create a new one and also a new profile. Click next. You want to give a name to your business account. I'm going to name it Gloria's Flower Shop. And the next one is the business display name. If this is a name that's going to show up on WhatsApp when your customers search you up. And then you want to choose a category. I will choose shopping and retail to match my flower shop. This takes you to the final step, which is to verify the phone number. Make sure to use the same phone number you put out on Azure portal. I will select receive a text message for the verification, but you can choose to receive a phone call as well if you want. Once I receive my verification code, I will put it down here and click Next. Review all the details before you click Continue. And that's all, you're all connected. Now let's come back to the WhatsApp, oh, sorry, the WhatsApp channels page. You can now see the new channel you just created. If you click into the channel details page, you will find all the necessary information you may need. For example, the phone number you just registered and the ID of the channel. Let's now talk about how you can handle messages that customers send you on your newly created WhatsApp channel. For that, we will use Event Grid Service, which enables businesses to receive events like incoming messages to your backend or any processing system. On the left plate, click on Events, then click on Plus Event Subscription. You will give your subscription a name I will simply use Gloria subscription and choose a topic name. 
Then you want to select which events you want to listen to. In our case, it will be advanced message received. There is also another event called delivery status updated, which gives you the delivery status of your outbound messages from your business to your customers. Then choose the type of the endpoint that will receive this event. You can use um, anything like an Azure function, a logic app, or a custom WhatsApp, sorry, a custom webhook URL as your destination. This is where ACS service will post the event data whenever a customer sends a message to your WhatsApp phone number. I'm going to put down the webhook URL of an event grid viewer application I have previously deployed. It looks like this. If you want a similar web app, go to aka.ms slash event grid viewer and follow the simple steps to deploy your own. Now I'm going to go back to Azure portal and I will put down the webhook URL of my event grid viewer and click confirm selection. Click create to finalize the subscription. Immediately, you will see a subscription validation event coming into my event grid viewer. And you can also see my subscription has been successfully added. Now let's come to the channel and we want to try sending a message to this phone number now. Note down this business phone number and open your WhatsApp application. Let's try sending a message from my personal WhatsApp number to the business phone number. Let's copy this number, look it up on WhatsApp and open a chat with it. So pretending I am a customer and want to reach out to a business, you type a message like, hello, this is Gloria and send it. And if you look at the event reviewer, you can see I've got an advanced message received event with a text content that I sent from my personal phone number. From now on, inbound messages will trigger events you can handle however you like, log them, store them in a database, or if you feel creative, even use Azure OpenAI to act as your AI agent to reply to these messages. All right, now you know how to receive messages from customers using EventGrid and process them in your backend. Let's now flip perspective. How do you send messages back to your customers? This is where the SDKs come in. Azure Communication Services provides SDKs for sending WhatsApp messages in multiple languages. Things like .NET, JavaScript, Java, and Python. So you can choose whatever best fits your tech stack. I will now walk you through an example using .NET SDK to send album messages back to your customer. Before we start, we're going to quickly grab the channel ID by going to the um, channels page and also grab the connection string for your ACS resource. Then you want to open Visual Studio and set up a new .NET project. I'm just going to create a simple console app and name it Gloria Console App. Next, click Create. A new project has now been created for you. Then we are going to go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Package for this solution. Let's try searching for Azure.Communication.Messages and we want to install the latest stable version. Accept, and the SDK has been successfully installed for your project. We can now come to program.cs and import the Azure Communication Services SDK. Then we're going to create a notification messages client using a connection string. Note that we are only using a connection string simply because it's easy to demonstrate However, we do recommend safer authentication methods such as Microsoft Entry ID. Next, we want to define our recipients. This is where you include the customer's WhatsApp phone number. Then we want to grab the channel registration ID of the channel that you created and construct a grid. Finally, we want to construct the text message you would like to send to your customer. We are going to use the text notification content class and we want to put down the channel registration ID, 
the recipient and the message you're going to send back. Now we basically have everything ready. We're going to use the notification messages clients send async method to send this message. Let's run the console app. Once the code is executed, you are going to receive this message you just constructed using the .sdk. Keep in mind, you can only send non-template freeform messages once the 24-hour window opens, when a customer sends an initial reach out message or replies to you. Otherwise, you can use the template notification, um, template notification content to construct a template message. So this is how you interact um, with your customers and how you integrate rich messaging into your application. Let's wrap up with a quick look at pricing. There are two components to consider when using WhatsApp messaging through Azure Communication Services. First, there is Meta's pricing. Meta charges based on a conversation-based model where you pay for every 24-hour messaging session. These sessions are categorized as marketing, utility, authentication, or services, etc. Each has different rates depending on the country and volume. You can find the full details on Meta's pricing page. The second component is Azure's charge. Azure Communication Services adds a flat rate for both inbound and outbound WhatsApp messages, which means for every message you send or receive through ACS, you will pay a small fee on top of Meta's charges. Together, this gives you a predictable usage-based model that scales with your messaging volume. For the latest details, you can always refer to aka.ms slash ACS dash WhatsApp dash pricing. And that is the end of our presentation. To summarize, we've walked through the full setup journey from creating your ACS resource, testing the WhatsApp sandbox, connecting a business account, handling inbound events, sending messages with code, and understanding pricing. With this setup, you are ready to build secure, scalable messaging workflows directly in Azure using WhatsApp. Thank you so much for joining.